this was this is my presentation for my summer project here at Evonik. I have been working at Evonik from June 5th to August 11th. Uh, yeah, sorry, my name is Emmanuel Ramogi. I am currently a student at UAB and I've been working as an, in, as an intern at Evonik for the past 10 weeks. So this is my presentation. The project title, the project title is uh, Plasma Enhanced Medical Devices. And as you can see, there's a project reference code as well. And my host facility was, or rather is still, Evonik Birmingham Laboratories. And I was located at the Tom Martin Drive section. The project, the project description is, this project was aimed to support the CIPTA program and the, direct, and the directives of the Evonik Research, Development and Innovation Mechanical Devices uh, Solutions Group. The project comprised of two parts. There was the fabrication and analysis of devices, components and constructs of biodegradable bio polymers. This, this was more of doing, this, this was more of 3D printing analysis. And then the second part was surface modification via a capacitively coupled plasma process. The disciplines involved were as follows, material science, mechanical engineering, which is actually my major back uh, at UAB, biomedical engineering and polymer chemistry. My mentors were Bana Bitaka and Jian Feng Zhang. So this is the experiment that I was performing while at Evonik. This is, this is just basically what I was doing for the whole 10 weeks, yeah. So the title was, I was investigating the effects of plasma treatment on the surface properties of polylactide acid, PLA, polylactic acid, co-glycolic acid, PLGA, polydioxonon, PDO, and polycaprolactone, PCL, using contact angle measurement. This slide shows the table of contents. Um, there are not so many slides, so I promise I won't take too much of your time. So at Evonik, they work with, they work with and mostly uh, do manufacture of biodegradable polymers, which are used in medical implants. Biodegradable poly polymers are useful because it eliminates the need of removal after surgery, because these particular polymers through the process of hydrolysis, they just dissolve into the body and they are eliminated, eliminated using the natural body processes. Um, one important thing is that these particular polymers, the surfaces have to be modified. When, when you modify the surface, it, since the surface acts as an interface, what happens is that the body, the human body will not reject the the, the, the human body will not reject the, the, the medical implant since the, the, since the surface has been modified in a way that allows it to be compatible with the human body. A common way of characterization of this particular polymers is by the use of the contact angle. This material characterization method denotes the angle formed when a drop of liquid meets the surface of a, of a material as you can clearly see in these photos over here, this angle occurs at the interface where the solid, the liquid, and the air meet. And when you look at the above uh, photo, this was a particular photo that I took when I was doing the contact angle measurement. And you can clearly see the angle that is denoted in the green color, 81.4 degrees. This is the contact angle. So, as I, uh, as, as was mentioned in the objective or rather the experiment, I was working with four polymers, PLA, PDO, PLG, and PCL, which are clearly seen in this particular photo over here. Um, the sample dimensions that were prepared, I used the Prusa Slicer 2.6.0 open source software. This enabled me to prepare the samples so that I could 3D print them. The printing was done using the Raise 3D Pro 2 3D printer here at Evonik. The sample was also prepared. Um, now, th this was the part of the plasma treatment. 
and it was carried out using the Autoglo 200 plasma cleaner, which, which can be seen on the photo on the left. The treatment, the treatment gas that I used was atmospheric air. So it's, it's just basically the air that we breathe. There were various parameters that were set for this particular experiment for each polymer sample. We, I, I, I varied the power uh, between uh, 10 watts, 20 watts, 50 watts, 100 watts, and 200 watts at a constant time of one minute each. Plus also the other bit of the experiment was varying the time. Varying the time meaning uh, the, dura the duration of plasma treatment in the chamber um, for one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, and 20 minutes at a constant power of 100 watts. Another set of samples from each polymer were treated for five minutes with a power of 100 watts, which I will explain later uh, how the experiment was for that particular set of samples. As I mentioned, that one of the characterization methods is contact angle, and the machine that was used is the Kruse Gognon meter, made in Germany, which is actually here at Evonik as well. And I, I, I used the sessile drop method the determination of the contact angle was performed using the ascend image analysis software. Since the drop shapes were symmetrical, the appropriate fitting method for this case that was used is the Young Laplace method. So this particular slide um, shows the drop. This uh, the, the 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 curved surface here is the drop, and right above it is the needle where you where you have to, uh, which, which you use to place the drop on the surface. It cannot be, you cannot clearly see the surface, but you can clearly see the drop. The surface is uh, the surface of the PCL sample. So this is how the contact angle is measured when you place the drop onto the surface. And then the, 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 there is a software, as I mentioned before, called Ascend, which has, um, um, which has, image detection, uh, which can detect the image and uh, the, the curved, the, which can detect the curves and be able to measure the contact angle once the machine has, be, has been calibrated. So these are the results that I got from the experiment. As, um, as you can clearly see in this paragraph, there are, um, various treatment uh, uh, let me explain it this way the green the green line ex, uh, the, the green the green line de denotes the samples that were untreated these were treated as the control samples and the other colors represent the treated times uh, the, 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 the 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 treated the treated samples so this particular shade of blue um, denoted the treatment time just immediately uh, uh, de denotes the, the contact angle measurement, sorry, the contact angle measurement just immediately after treatment. And then I took the, me the, the contact angle measurement after, after one day, and then after two days, after five days, and also after 12 days. As you can clearly see in this graph, this is for PLA. The contact angle for the untreated samples was much higher than the contact angle for the other uh, for the for the treated samples after all those uh, after after all those days. So this is this was for PLA, and on the right we have the one for PCL. The same is true also for PLGA. The untreated the 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 the, uh, the, the, the contact angle for the untreated sample is much higher as compared to the other to uh, as compared to the to the to the to the other lines that denote the treated sample. Now, I'd I'd like to mention this. One thing I noticed with the the the, the polymer that I've left out, that is PDO, is that PDO is a very sensitive, uh, it's a very sensitive polymer. And in this particular graph, as you can see, the the untreated sample, the, the contact angle for the untreated sample was high, but immediately it was treated and I took the measurement for the contact angle. The contact angle was way below compare in comparison to the other polymer samples. Yep. 
Um, so these other particular graphs denote the variation in power that was taken at 10 watts, at 20 watts, at 50 watts, at 100 watts, and, and, and at 200 watts. So each color denotes the different types of polymers, blue being PLGA, orange PLA, gray PDO, and yellow as PCL. It is clearly seen also from these graphs, when you do a comparison of all the graphs plus also all the polymers, that PDO is quite a sensitive uh, polymer, and its rate of change in contact angle at different time steps is greater than PLA, PCL, and PLGA. And the same is true also when the, dura the, the, when the, when, when the treatment time duration was, was varied, when, when, when treated for one minute, when treated for two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, and 20 minutes. It can also be clearly seen that PDO is quite sensitive. Um, a quick comparison of all the polymers shows that PDO is highly hydrophilic, especially after treatment. As you can see in this particular, in this last graph, where the treatment time was for 20 minutes, PDO had the lowest recorded as 3.54 degrees of contact angle, which was measured at the time step six after 20 minutes of plasma treatment. So here are the conclusions from this particular experiment. The effect of plasma modification, number one was that the effect of plasma modification on the surface of the polymers has significant impact on the contact angle. That is uh, as clearly seen from the graphs that were presented before. And this reveals a change in surface properties. Since the contact angle significantly changes after treatment, it means that the surface properties actually change. And for all the polymer samples, the contact angle reduces re with respect to an increase in power or, uh, or, or, the treat or, or, the, or the treatment time, that is. Number three, lastly, the control samples, that is the untreated samples, exhibit high contact angles, but once plasma treated, there is a decrease in contact angles. And moreover, which is, this is important, PDO exhibits a huge difference in contact angle between its control sample, the untreated, and the sample treated immediately. Thus, PDO exhibits the most sensitivity to plasma surface modification. Um, so th that, that is the conclusion of the experiment. And now I'd like to just share uh, just a few, a, a few things, um, maybe about the, my experience at Evonik as being an intern um, and the impact that it has made on my career. Number one, I'd say that it has improved my research skills, especially when it comes to analysis. Um, um, when, when, when measuring the contact angle, it, I, I, I had to put a lot of patience into that. And I believe this particular skills has been able to uh, make the, to, to, to make me gain experience in terms of um, being patient and uh, doing analysis and uh, doing, a lot, do, doing a lot of graph work as you can as you, as you had seen in uh, as you had seen in the previous slides number two um, what I really appreciate is the collaboration in a, comp in, a in a corporate environment um, when I started working at Evonik that is in person because the first two weeks I was working at home um, because of the onboarding process. When I started working in person at the company, one of my managers, um, he's actually a Scott, he told me that it is important to know the roles of everyone in the company so that it's easier to reach out to the person. You see, one of my men, uh, um, you see, if, if I kept on reaching out to my mentor for any challenge that I had, it means that I wasn't really learning on I wasn't really learning the the roles of other people in 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 in, in this particular department. It's so much easier to to know the role of what 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 one person does, so that you can always reach out to them if you need some help. For example, for the contact angle measurement uh, machine, I had to reach out to one of one of, one one of my colleagues over here. Uh, because she was the expert in that. Um, number three, I would say that I have learned to 
I, I, I've come to understand the differences between academia and industry. In the in industry, in, 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 in industry, it seems that a, a lot of things is driven by money. Of course, I believe the same is true also for academia, but for industry, it's 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 much more blown up, which which is of course true because you can't be in business if you're not making money. And I've come to appreciate and to learn those differences. And I believe that going forward in my career, that will help me understand um, the differences, uh, not only the differences between the both, be between both, but 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 um, but in in case I, I choose to. In case, uh, in my in case in my future, uh, let's say like in the, in the next five years or, uh, or 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 after my or after my studies, I'll be able to. Um, to 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 make to to make a wise decision, considering that I've experienced now um, both of them. Um, here is the acknowledgement. Um, the, this this work was found was funded by the FTPP and. Uh, the National Science Foundation. So, of course, the opinions and findings and conclusions or recommendations expressed are those of the authors and do not ref necessarily reflect the views of the National Science Foundation. Um, these were the references that were gathered from this work that I performed. And uh, yeah, in case there are any questions, feel, please feel free to ask. Yeah. Thank you. That was a great job. Thank you, Emmanuel. Uh, we'll leave it open to the floor. Does anybody have any questions? No questions? I, I don't have any questions. Uh, I, I would I would like to say that uh, we enjoyed we've enjoyed working with Emmanuel. He's very great. Um, and, and that this work, I think, is very interesting because um, these materials that he tested typically have a very long degradation time. And uh, that's one of the parameters I, I think that this opens up is that we, with this plasma treatment and, and sort of the work he's done shows that, hey, we have options to sort of potentially uh, lower that degradation time. And, and that op opens up opportunities for applications of these materials that are, are not fully realized yet. So uh, I, I think it's a, this is some great fundamental data from my point of view. Uh, likewise, I'd, I'd like to throw out there. There are questions uh, I would have. I think Emmanuel, we, you know, we may have talked about it offline. Uh, but I, I guess you know, due to some of the corporate constraints, uh, I actually can't talk uh, too much out loud. Uh, you know, because of the potential for proprietary application. But I, I think you know that just kind of goes to highlight uh, you know the utility of, of what you did here, Emmanuel. You know, I'm. Um, I, I can say we've enjoyed having you here and uh, and to everyone present here I just want to brag on him and say he was a, a very quick study um, he was able to adapt to a variety of situations um, as well as fully execute the the project as as we had planned out and uh, and I'm I'm also a bit surprised because I, I thought we were going to run out of time for the aging study uh, but it looks like you were you were able to get in at least 12 days um, up to that, you know, I, uh, in the future, I'll, I'll admit we'd like to go further, but, uh, but you know, limited with 10 weeks, uh, we had constraints on, constraints on that, but uh, Emmanuel, very, very good job, and it was a pleasure working with you this summer. Sounds like you've done an amazing job, and <laughs> 10 weeks is never enough, right? <laughs> but they would like to keep you. <laughs> Cor correct. I, I would have rather had, you know, 20 weeks or 40 weeks. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. We, unfortunately, I have to return him back to his schooling. <laughs> but yeah, um, it was it was a great presentation. Thank you so much for sharing. Does anybody else have any um, questions or comments? And if not, then... well, well, well oh, I, uh, I second what Barbie and, and John has you know, said. It's definitely been a pleasure working with Emmanuel, and uh, you know, uh, we hope to see him see him more after this. I think he did, you know, seconding what uh, Barbie said. I thought he also was a quick study, and, and I think we even were able to expose him to a few other like common technologies that are used in in this area as well. And so, um, uh, anyway, it was. It, it was it was nice working with you and like I said I hope we can we can continue this at some point.
Thank you. Um, maybe from my end, I will also like to, in case there are any, no, no questions, no other questions, maybe, can I speak, Laura? Yeah, of course, yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, it's it's been an it's an it's been an amazing experience working at Ivonik. I have met so many wonderful people, as you have heard them speak as well, and uh, yeah, I have learned quite a lot. And I think of all of all the lessons that I've learned from all of them individually, even at personal level, as we've had so many talks with uh, my various colleagues, um, I, I will take them in life. I mean. Uh, one quote that I remember from Barnaby is that you should learn to man manage expectations and deliver accurately. So that, that is what I was trying to do with uh, this particular presentation and even my report that I'm supposed to also write as well. I, I, could have I, I could have put so much into this presentation in terms of the lessons that I've learned from John, from Scott, from Barnaby and also from Jay-Z, but uh, I didn't have enough time. But yeah, but uh, it, it, it's, it's been an awesome experience. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I would also like to say thank you to FTPP, uh, the group, Laura, Indira, and uh, the rest. Yeah, it's been a wonderful experience and I couldn't have got it if it wasn't for you guys as well. Yeah.